You're now tuned in to Don Easy TV. Don Easy TV. Metro Arm Security Stories. Story time. Let's get Yo, it. Yo, I'll never forget, man. So let me recap again. Let me recap. I survived a crazy station in Compton. I survived the crazy station in Long Beach, and I survived the crazy station in downtown Red Line. And I survived crazy stations in West LA, Santa Monica, Expo Line. So let's get to this new stuff. Now let's get back when I was working the Blue Line. The Blue Infamous Line. I know they changed the name, but I'm still going to call it the Blue Line. <laughs> At the infamous, the notorious Arteza Station. One way in, one way out. Anyway, this particular day, I was driving in the company vehicle because the driver, the normal driver, called off. I normally would work the turnstiles. Anyway, I'm in the parking lot doing my rounds in the patrol car. Easy money. Easy money. So, at one point, I seen one of the sheriffs... And me and him start chopping it up about sports and who's playing this weekend and da 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 da. He's like, "Oh my God!" I said, "What happened?" He said, "Somebody just got hit by a uh, hit by the train over there." I said, "Oh man!" He said, "You coming?" I said, "Nah, I'm gonna stay in the parking lot. I let y'all handle that." <laughs> so I get closer. I see everybody all around, and I. Man, I'm glad I didn't go over there, man. They said this dude had his headphones on and the train was coming and everybody was telling him, no, no. And he just kept walking head first. Boom. And he said that train hit him so hard he flew like five to six feet in the air. And then he flew backwards, maybe like 20 yards backwards. Boom. And then knocked down his uh this 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 pole knocked it off the foundation they said the blood was leaking from his nose and his mouth like coming down like water they said he was instantly dead by the time i got there because my supervisor came and maybe it was like 30 minutes later man i came to the front gate they was pushing him out and they had like a sheet over him but you could see a gang of blood over his face and I knew he was gone. They just had the sheet over him. Maybe he was still, heart was still beating, but he was, I can tell he was gone. So anyway, dude, so now we got to do crowd control. OMG, everybody's mad now because the train is delayed and they need to get to work and they get mad at us. There's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do. I got to go to work. I got to go to school. I got to go here. I got to go there. Like we can magically make the trains come back, you know what I'm saying, through the station. So all the stations, all the trains, everybody's waiting from the beginning to the ending. When, the, when somebody get hit, it's like a hour or two, sometimes three hour delay. And man, it messes the whole lines up And man, that sucks So if you ever waiting on the train It's been about two or three hours Just know somebody got hit by a train Or a car got hit by a train Or somebody jumped in front of a damn train Or sadly these days Somebody pushed somebody in front of the train So uh, it'll be there about an hour Nah, make it about two or three hours <laughs> And that's not it man so on the train we got a lot of people on the train that are different fixtures on the train they have different personalities and but they stick out they stick out so one person in particular that i remember to this day it's been years i don't know if he's still alive but the blind dude <laughs> the blind dude I ain't gonna lie, he was legally blind. He was legally blind. He was legally blind. <laughs> he was really legally blind. And he'll get on the train, and he'll say, Hey, hey, I'm on the train again. I'm blind. I can't see. And then I speak two, three languages, especially Espanol. Then he say a little sentence. Then he make the people that speak Spanish start laughing. <laughs> then he say something to us, we start laughing. And then the killer part about him, he would pull out one of his eyes. 
OMG! Didn't you really believe he was blind? <laughs> then he go to the sob story. Then he go to the sob story. I wonder if y'all could donate a couple of dollars to a, to a, you know, he'll come with a different title to a veteran to a, you know. <laughs> he was a character. The blind guy, the one thing interesting, you back then, you still, before all this social distancing, Everybody kept six feet from him because he had a little stench. He had a little stench. <laughs> and not only you didn't want to just smell him, you didn't even know if something's going to jump off on him. Oh, MG. But I can't lie. I can't lie. He had personality. He was funny. He would tell this one girl all the time. I don't know. I, well, not all the time. About, a, about two times, this certain girl... I would catch the train with her, and um, he was like, yeah, girl, I know. I, you know I can't see, but I bet you, you're thicker than a snicker, and you got about 20 pounds of fat cat down there. <laughs> and she loved for him to say that. What else I got? Then he'll put the extras on, and he'll be like, girl, you know what you got. You know what you got. He'll see a lot of, you got 20 pounds of fat cat down there. And people like, we got kids on here. We got kids on here. <laughs> So if you ever on the blue line and you see a guy that say, I'm blind, I'm blind, step back. That's the blind dude. <laughs> and that's not it, man. So you had all type of people, fixtures on the train, people begging, people selling roses, people doing all kind of antics, people dancing, people fighting, just doing, just everybody known for something on the train. <laughs> So this other dude that stuck out, it was this dude I call the poet. <laughs> the poet was smooth. He was different. I respect him to this day because he didn't beg for no money, but he'd get a little aggressive. He'd be like, uh, hey, 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 young lady. Hey, 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 I got this. Uh, uh. And he had this like this little picture. It's like a little, but it got like a quotes and stuff on it. And it's real dope. And he got these dope poetry of his own poetry and then he'll he'll say well can i just recite something to you real quick and he'll say it like a like a little like dropping bars but doing it in a poetic way man he was smooth with it i don't know if he got numbers on the train but he sure know how to sell them little cardboard he'll send them little cardboard of his little pictures and his rhymes for like about a dollar or, or more he'll take i'll take a dollar donation i'll take a dollar no what's up brother but then he'll get a little little aggressive sometime like hey man i I'm, I'm not, no, talk to the ladies. You're not going to talk to me. Talk to the ladies. <laughs> he come here looking like Eric Bonet and shit. <laughs> With his hair all braided up, you know. <laughs> looking all smooth. Yeah, the, the sky is the limit. And, you know, he just got these little smooth little bars. It's mostly for the ladies. Stay away. Talk to the ladies, Mr. Poet. <laughs> so if you ever on the blue line and you see a dude looking like Air Bonet, hair dreaded up and, you know, braided up and looking smooth and dapper with no shoes on, <laughs> that's the poet. That's the poet. <laughs> Subscribe, like, comment to Don Easy TV. Yeah.